things in the mail, which I sometimes forget to do since there's really nothing good in there. Uh, we just have a pile right here where we throw the mail. I also bring in the newspaper, which we still get a newspaper, mostly because uh, I want my kids to tell their grandchildren 80 years from now, well, I remember when I was a kid, they, they used to have this thing called a newspaper, and they... And I also found this box. It's um, from the publisher, and uh, I didn't ask for it, but they just sent me free books. Can you imagine that? Turns out that they believe that if they give me free books, that I will turn around and buy, or well, require my students to buy those books. So they give me them free so that I'll decide to make you buy a book that's really expensive. Um, anyway, I didn't ask for it. We should be in thing over here later. Um, got something from the school district. Yeah. Got something from the town. This is a lovely little letter. The town has a, there's a new state law that doesn't allow the town to, they, there's a tax cap on the property taxes. So what the town decided to do is send us a bill for, um, for uh, the pickup of leaf and, and lawn debris. So I now have to pay a $30 yearly charge whether I use this service or not. So they didn't raise my property taxes, it just created a user fee for me. Regardless of whether or not I have yard waste, I have to pay this bill. Of course, don't get me started on property taxes. They, uh, they assessed my last house at 50% higher than the actual value of the house, which meant I was paying an ungodly amount of, of property taxes. So we sold that house and bought this one here. Um, just think about how you decide to pay taxes. It can't be based on income. In fact, in my last house, my property taxes were 50% of my take-home pay. After all my federal and state and, and whatever taxes were taken out, I had barely enough left to pay my property taxes. So, crazy world we live in. So what is the role? Well, partly I think about the responsibility spectrum and, and uh, by that I mean who should pay for something. If you want a cup of coffee, there's the individual, there's the family, there's the community. You know, maybe the Boy Scouts will pay for your coffee. There's the uh, <clears throat> local government. There's the state government. There's the federal government. Who has the responsibility to pay for that cup of coffee? Well, most people seem to think the individual ought to pay for that coffee. <clears throat> But it makes you wonder who benefits and, and who receives stuff. Think about that. Um, let's take road maintenance. Now, typically in a town, you'll have the, the, the town itself will pay for the roads. And that's pretty normal. And that, that's pretty desirable. We wouldn't want to each have to take care of our own portion of the road. Now, would we? Because if we did, well, let's see what would happen. Yeah, here I am out in the middle of the Adirondacks, uh, hoping to get home tonight. Beautiful spot I recognize, but uh, if you want to get home, you really want to get home. So what I really need to do is, uh, well, I'm afraid I need to shovel the, the road. Um, that's on my driveway. My driveway's over here, and uh, this isn't really regular old sand. This is cement mix. Um, I find it really grips the road pretty well. So for, for a couple dollars, I can buy a bag of cement mix rather than digging up some sand, and I'm in much better shape. Um, so the reason why we're here is to talk about my neighbor. Nah, not really. They're nice people, but they are a little lazy. They could have taken this road, and they could have plowed this road. Uh, well, shoveled it, actually. And they could have put the sand down. That would have been great for me. But they didn't do that. They went off this morning just tearing down the road, hoping they're going to get up that hill. Uh, this is down a hill, but then you go around a bend, and then it's up a hill. So they didn't do any work on it, but I've decided that I actually want to get home. So um, I do need to leave today, and therefore I need to shovel the road. And after I shovel the road, I'm going to sand the road because... Somebody's got to do it in order to guarantee me getting out of here. Now, road maintenance is usually considered a public good because uh, when you improve the road, everybody benefits. So, 
my neighbor who took off pell mell down here is going to be coming back in a little while. They probably just went off skiing for the day. And when they come tearing up this hill, they're going to find shoveled and sanded. They're going to find themselves no problem getting up there. That makes them what's known as a free rider. They didn't do any, any of the costs associated with that public good improving the road, but they're going to benefit it just as much as me. Now, I want to go back and address something else. I was talking about getting this, this uh, book from FedEx. Why does FedEx exist? We have the U.S. Post Office. And think about that. Why, does the, why don't we have the government providing my newspaper? You know, uh, it's inefficient in a way, because where I live, we have some people get the Times Union, and some people get the, the Daily Gazette. So there's somebody from the Times Union driving down the street handing out newspapers, and somebody from the Gazette doing the same thing. The beauty of government is one person can handle both those tasks. So the government, and of course the, the history of the post office goes way back to the Washington administration. Uh, sounds like a great idea, but of course what do we have today? Just a bunch of junk mail and perhaps a few bills. Um, and yet, FedEx exists. UPS, UPS exists. Why do they exist? Because obviously the bureaucracy of the post office was not doing what the market wanted. They couldn't provide the same overnight service or whatever. And, and it's, quite frankly, the reason why they still exist is because the post office, faced with that demand, or with that market, could not actually meet the demands of the market. It's kind of interesting when you think about that. How do you handle your garbage? Is that done by the town, or is that done by a private enterprise? Let's see how a private enterprise is. It's pretty cold out here if I'm wearing a hat like this. It's actually brutal. And uh, what I have going on here is the uh, garbage man. I'm getting a video of him. You see the closet come out, grab the uh, garbage, dump it up there, and put it back. I think there's... There's just one guy in there, the driver, and uh, the idea here is a private enterprise has every reason to be efficient. Government enterprises have no reason to be efficient. So, if I had a garbage man that was a, uh, a government contractor, probably, or a government employee, we'd probably have found three or four people working on the back of the trucks, picking up the garbage, rather than this guy who, who zips along quickly, grabs everything with the claws, dumps it in and goes. Now, in some things, there is a natural monopoly that might occur. Um, cable TV, they have to run all the lines. It might seem to be a natural monopoly to say we only need one cable line service, but, but there are some things that while they may appear to be a natural, garbage collection can be done by one, um, uh, by one group of people, the town, rather than uh, multiple uh, garbage companies coming on different days to get different people's garbage. But the beauty when that happens is the free market allows for competition. I've got neighbors who used to go to the same service I get, but not use a different service. I used the same service for 15 years, and I decided to switch because a lot of other people are switching, and I, they seemed happier. So. The free market gives you choice. When the government gets involved, you have one choice, one size fits all.